Chris Marabella says, why did the 300 sequel do much better than the Sin City sequel? Both came out eight to nine years after the original. That's a, that a, good question. That's a really good question. Yeah, I, I also think that for some reason, depending on the Gladiator movies and the 300 original, I think did better than the original Sin City. It was a bigger... Uh, and a French is a bigger property when it first came sure, out, and yeah. I think the Gladiator big epic scales are all, would always have a better chance of pulling in audiences sure. more so than uh, the smaller film noir, very specific audience. So maybe that's why. And, and, and look, to just go to a marketing point of view, I, I remember when the first trailer for Sin City finally dropped, and we talked about it on this show, and I said, look, I, I really knows I've been looking forward to the new Sin City. I, I think they waited five years too long, but I'm looking forward to this movie, and that trailer did nothing for me. The marketing of that film. I think was very blah. And if I wasn't somebody who had already been looking forward to Sin City, it wouldn't have done anything to me get me excited. Whereas 300, Rise of an Empire, if you didn't see the original 300, hey, this looks like a high octane kind of lots of adrenaline, grrr, mm -hmm. I, I'm a man, let's go see the movies, and, and Eva Green. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, so there was more enticement there just from the marketing point of view, but you're right, it is kind of a surprise that 300 sequel does fairly well, and mm -hmm. the Sin City sequel may have ended some careers. Yeah, well, I think the 300, when the first one came out, that entered the pop culture lexicon in a way oh, that Sin yeah. City could never touch. I mean, you had every dude at a bar would slam a shot and yell, Sparta, right yeah. afterwards. You don't have a creepy guy in the corner drinking a beer, right. and then, like, like Sin City, you know, right. like, oh, she was a leggy dame, and I was looking at her from the corner. Yeah. I knew I was in trouble. Yeah, we <laughs> agree, all Why right. Why am I talking to myself? <laughs> what else we got in there? Anthony Ibarra says, with movies such as Exodus and Noah popping up, could we see the Iliad and Odyssey reboot brought to the big screen? I'm pretty positive there is an Odyssey yeah. thing in the, uh, I'm trying to remember now off the top of my head, but we talked about it not too long ago. And look, we, these old classic, especially the Greek mythology stuff, especially the Greek mythology stuff, um, these, whether it's a direct make of them or whether it's heavily influenced by, we see incarnations of those stories in particular all the time. Mm -hmm. Like a great example of that is, oh brother, where art thou? Right? I mean, because it's completely based on Homer's. I think we're, it's, so I think we will always see these incarnations, and I think we'll see some direct uh, uh, manifestations, if you will, of them too. So what do you guys think? I think we will, and I think because of the box office success, we will. And I think that I think Exodus is going to do very well in the box office, even if it turns out to be slow and boring. There's a specific audience that will go see it. There are people that, what they're doing now with the example of like Noah and Exodus, is they're getting not just like the hard, hardcore, let's say religious fans that are gonna see these properties, they're also, they're, they're changing it up into where they're now going after what we just talked about with 300, the epic movie fan yeah, and the, yeah. to where they're, they're Cause that's what they used to be, right? Whether it's the original Ben-Hur, Ten Commandments, yes. they weren't just like biblical religious films, right. those were epic scale Hollywood films. You had to films. experience those things in a yeah. theater. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I remember my dad telling me a story when he saw the Ten Commandments, it just took over the screen right. in a way that you hadn't seen that before. And I think that the, whatever you want to say about religion, it, there's some really cool stories in the Bible. And when you use that as an epic storytelling, like I don't think that there's actually an ark that Noah got. I don't think Noah got on a boat. I don't think his daughter was Hermione. However, when you see that movie. I'm pretty sure that's actually in the Bible. It is. Noah's daughter is Hermione. Uh -huh. Which one is Hogwarts Quidditch in? Is that, is that Harry Potter? Or now, or I have a theological the background, so I can tell you right now. <laughs> Yeah, it's just a good, I think it's a good excuse to tell a really epic story, so I think you'll keep seeing them. All right, what's next? The new Brad Ass says, heard a while back about a possible reboot for Weird Science. Any news on this, or was it just a rumor? Well, that came out about six months ago, yeah. I think. But uh, to, to be fair, the uh, remake for Weird Science has actually popped up, or at least rumors of it has popped up at least every two or three years. Mm -hmm. We've heard something of it. I... I I just don't know if that works. I, I'm all for remakes. I, I'm fine with remakes. I don't care. They might suck and that doesn't matter. But I don't know how a weird science story works today. See, I, I don't want to see a remake because I love the original so much. But I actually think that if you're going to remake it, it probably makes more sense to do it today because of they did it with a computer back in the day. And the technology wasn't, this is 1985 or 86 yeah. or whatever it was. And I thought because Joel Silver was one of the producers, strangely enough, on that movie, I thought that the rumor was that he was doing it as well to I, I don't know but um yeah. it depends on the comedy team it depends on the director I just hope it's not the same comedy actors that we get I like to see brand new uh, kids that do it maybe get some comedy stars and it could work you do want to see Michael Hall come back uh, I, I like want to see Bill Michael. Paxton come back as <laughs> yeah. Chet. I think that'd be Chet. great if he was like Uncle Chet and he still yeah. came down wearing nothing but a towel. It'd be hysterical. Be yeah. I love this idea simply for the fact yeah. that if you if you remake Weird Science, it means that it's going to take you longer to remake Back to the Future. I think we can all get behind <laughs> that. 
All right, we got time for two more quick ones. Let's get to it. All more. right, Gabe wants to know what are some of the ov overlooked or underrated films that you've seen this year? For him, it's The One I Love. Oh, The One I Love is a really good one. Uh, start with you guys. I'm going to cheat and look at my film list for this year. I mean, I feel like every time, as far as underrated, every time this question comes up, I always say the but same this year. thing. Yeah, the, the, oh. I always say it oh, tomorrow. Yeah. I always say it tomorrow. I, I think we, we talked about it last week, and it's just, it's the movie to me that is it was going to be an uh, and turn to be one of the best of the year so far. Yeah, and I think there's a reason why you say that these certain movies are underrated. It's because I can't remember any of them right now. Um, I think that Godzilla still, to me, I liked it more than a lot of other people did. And I think that people maybe didn't appreciate the theater experience as much as I did. I think the storytelling up to the cool reveal that everybody loved was really uh, exciting. So I'd probably go with that. Um, I'm going to Edge of Tomorrow. You have to, and that's the studio's fault that it got so overlooked because they yeah. put out the Title, marketing campaign. Trailers, and everything, yeah. Titles, everything is awful. I also really like Godzilla, but I think there was an, I think there's enough of us that you can't really call it an rate. I think there's yeah. enough yeah. of us that like Godzilla. I'm, you know, I'm looking down. Oh, just because nobody saw it, Chef. Oh yeah. yeah. Just because nobody go, saw yeah. it. But Chef, Chef though, for the market that it was in. For the market that it was in, it did really, really well. So people who were seeing it in the yeah. store loved people it. That people who saw it trucks. loved it. But yes. I think Grant told me like 31 Multiple million bucks, which is way beyond what I think they thought it was yeah, going to make. Yeah, but yeah. still, next to nobody saw it. Right. And so it's I would... still in AMC theaters, so they can go see it now. Nice. Yes. Now they can go Good see point. it. Good point. Okay, go. last question of the day. <laughs> All right, last one from Jason Smith wants to know, will Jurassic World return us to the wonderment and just pure adventure of the original? I think when you... Uh, 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 the guy, the guy who's the guy who's director, director? Colin Trevor. Trevor, yeah. I think when they, he said that that was his actual goal, he wants that. We all remember that moment in Jurassic Park when the doctor gets out of the jeep and he's taking his glasses off, shaking, and then the camera pans around and you see the landscape. That sense of awe and wonder and magic. Oh, and the musical score, yeah. it's so incredible. That's what he said. We need again. We need that again in Jurassic Park. But how do you do it when? when Jurassic Park already exists. We've been desensitized to that. We now see Godzilla walking through downtown, whatever. Yeah. That's going to be the challenge. If he can pull that off, magic. But that is what they're going for. They're not just going for a big, let's have the T-Rex attack New York City, lots of explosions. They're going back to let's capture that awe and wonder and fear. Yeah. You, you could make an argument that Jurassic Park could almost be adventure, sci-fi slash, small letters, horror. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, because that movie's terrifying. Yeah. If he can capture that again, Awesome. I, I think he's going to. I think even uh, an interview that we did with him a while ago, he said he's going to he's going to follow what came before him, right. uh, and meaning the first one. And, and he was he was being very as tiptoey as he could about it. But another thing people aren't bringing up about it is we keep forgetting that Chris Pratt's in this thing. Chris <laughs> Pratt from this being in the biggest movie of the year is going to add now tremendous star power and people butts in the seats. So I think that Chris Pratt is in a career path to where he's going to start doing movies that are, it's not going to be, it's not going to be the third Jurassic Park. It's going to be back to, I think, the, the originals. Yeah, uh, it could be a really good movie, and I'm really excited to see Jurassic World. You ain't getting the magic you got with the first one. You it's don't just, think so at all? It's going to be hard. It, 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 it's I, think hard. It's, I think it's, it's literally impossible to do because that furthered the art of cinema in a way that we hadn't yeah. seen before. That opened so many doors, and you had just never seen a dinosaur on screen before, like what you said. You're going to have already seen dinosaurs on screen. It could be really cool. There could be this cool aqua monster that nobody's ever heard of before, but it's not going to have the magic of the first Jurassic Park. It could be a five out of five. It ain't gonna be the magic of the first. I don't know. Cause with Trevor, with he's one of the, I think he's a special director. I think he's a guy that did a small film. He's similar to Gareth Edwards, to where they're like, hey, you did. Safety not guaranteed. Yeah, yep. you did something great. Uh, let's see what you do in the big time, kid. And I think he's gonna knock it out. Hey everyone, if you like this video, click that thumbs up button and make sure to subscribe to our AMC Movie News YouTube channel. It's free and helps you stay up to date with all the latest movie news, as well as our daily AMC Movie Talk Show. Also, make sure that you follow us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with all of our special promotions, contests, and prize giveaways.